I'd like to welcome everybody to today's webinar. Just Add Power has recently released a few new exciting products to support for filing. And Jeff Terzo, Vice President of Business Development of Just Add Power, will be taking us through the next 30 minutes to discuss these outstanding new solutions. I'm Kim Robbins. I'm the Senior Marketing Manager at BTX. And I'll be your host, and I'll be fielding questions. And speaking of questions, we like this to be as interactive as we can, so please feel free to use the question section on your um, toolbar and ask as many as you'd like. Just a little bit about BTX. Uh, for nearly 50 years, BTX has been the premier AV distributor um, of emerging technologies, signal processing products, and integration essentials, offering our customers access to solutions to grow their business. Our focus lies firmly in creating value by delivering outstanding products and services like the ones we're going to hear about today from Jeff Dad Power. BTX supplies many thousands of the finest interface, integration, and system products, as well as engineer our own unique and patented solutions. We have deep technical expertise on all of our solutions that we provide, and our applications engineers, inside and outside sales teams, are readily available to help you specify, purchase, and then support your project requirements. Our full product line card offers thousands of products to make implementation of your project. Among the many key integration building blocks that we provide are custom cable assemblies, custom plates and panels, video extenders, signal distribution, and cable management. When you work with BTX, you work with a team of people whose mission it is to bring you new ideas to excite your customers, enhance the elegance of your design, and drive revenues and profits to your bottom line. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jeff that he can show his presentation about the new product. Jeff, let me know. You see on your screen? Yep, there we go. We good? Yes, we're good. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Like Kim said, I'm Jeff Terza with uh, Just Say Power. Uh, kind of uh, our housekeeping things here is we're a briefly go through of um, who we are and what we do and then we'll jump in right into uh, the features that we offer on our new Ultra HD products uh, as well as uh, the multi-view tiling device that we'll be shipping this month as well. So with that we'll jump right in. If you have not heard of Just Add Power, uh, we have actually just celebrated 26 years in business. We are a made in America product, so tech support, engineering, manufacturing, all that is done in Largo, Florida, outside of Tampa. Uh, we strictly make encoders and decoders or transmitters and receivers, so you'll never see us um, importing product and putting our name on it, um, HD base T or um, balance or anything like that. We're solely focused on HD and Ultra HD over IP. Uh, so with that, we are truly a limitless solution. So any number of sources to any number of outputs all over a gigabit network. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. So we also can do this over miles of cable. So no longer are you limited by 330 feet from uh, matrix switch to the display or anything like that or running a separate balance back to a um, central matrix. So we can do really anything that can be done in the networking world. We can run audio, video, control, and a few other things that we'll talk about um, on the next few slides here. So when people ask us, we like to say, you know, we are a matrix switch. We just do things a little differently. So if your client wants to do, say, two sources to nine screens, you do two, two transmitters and nine receivers. Pretty, pretty easy. Seven by four, same thing. You never waste inputs and outputs. You always get exactly what you need and you can scale that system really as large as you want. So there is a theoretical limit of 4,096 sources to 65,000 screens. So really no practical limit that we see. Um, so that's kind of the basis of what we do. A transmitter per source, receiver per display, gigabit network in between that. So real quick on what we do a little different and then we'll jump into the, the feature sets. So limitless distribution, 
Uh, we do instant switching. The handshaking issues we handle a little differently as well. So receiver holds the handshake with the display. Source holds it with the transmitter. Never really cares or sees what happens between it. Another big one for us is if data works, just if power works. So you can go through patch panels, keystones, wall plates, all of those kind of things without fear of um, you know, degrading or not getting a signal at all. Also, a three-year warranty on all the product we have. Uh, for that three years, it is advanced overnight replacement. So if you were to have a piece die, you will get a replacement uh, on your job site or in your office for all three years the next day. So we take you know, pride in, in, in handling um, any issues that do arise. So now we'll actually get into the features and what we do and how we do it. So built into all of the 3G products, just like the 2G and uh, 1080p, is the ability to do video walls. So up to a 16 high, 16 wide, uh, really any aspect ratio that you want to do. Um, obviously, if you go out of a, a normal aspect ratio, we will then begin to stretch things, and I'll show you that on this next page. So what this is, this is a three high, six wide video wall. And there are presets set up so it can change dynamically on the fly. So as I hit play here, you'll start to see, you know, full screen mode. And then um, it broken out into, into single screens on the sides. And then we start to stretch these if we do go out of, of an aspect ratio. So fully dynamic, however you want to change that on the fly, however your end user wants to see it, that can all be done. Uh, with simple IP commands from a control system, PC, tablet, whatever it may be. <clears throat> so there's that wall on game day. Uh, there's a live broadcast feed in the middle from the field. Uh, digital signage pieces down the left and right. This actually won Best Bar Restaurant um, and Commercial Integrator this year. So it's actually a pretty neat install for us. A little bit more on the video wall, just to think outside of the box of what we can do. This shows some of the video wall columns that were done there. So same type of um, configuration just wrapped around the column. You know, these are the same exact transmitters and receivers that we're using just to route video that we can start to do things like this. Um, so, you know, just a different um, type of application than normal just video switching. So some of the other things that we do that are different uh, we give you the ability to pull back images up to 10 frames per second back on a control system. Um, so another quick video is a confidence monitor. This is going out and showing what four different just had power receivers are viewing at any given time. Um, great for you know an IT manager that wants to see what's being routed throughout a facility. Uh, we do a lot of bar restaurant applications where um, you know, an iPad behind the bar, they can see exactly what's routed where in the restaurant at any given time. So just another, you know, visual feedback option that we give, and that can be pulled on the transmitter or receive side. Image push that we added uh, is also a feature on the Ultra HD product. It gives you the ability to custom load a JPEG image into any of the receivers. That way, if you're source were to die, if it was powered off, if the network was down for maintenance, really any issues that arise, instead of getting a blank screen or a no signal or searching for signal, it's going to populate these images. That could be, you know, something simple as a casino logo all the way to, you know, check to see if the DirecTV box is turned on to your company logo. Really whatever you want it to be, uh, you really never get that blank screen. Um, if a source were to be turned off or something like that. More of a fail-safe than anything. Instant switching, uh, we kind of talked about real quick, but I'll go over it now. Uh, we switch video within a frame rate or instantaneous. This is from any resolution from 480p all the way through 2160p or Ultra HD. So um, <clears throat> never a blank screen uh, when switching from really any resolution at this point. We can be totally decentralized as well. So anywhere you have a network drop or you have a source or you want to put a display, you just drop in a transmitter receiver and then you have that available source anywhere on your um, system. 
Another thing with the Ultra HD product, we can share a gigabit LAN over that network run. So in this case, we have a single Cat5 or Cat6 pool um, to a zone. We drop in a little unmanaged gigabit switch, plug our just a power receiver into it, and then every other port on that switch is going to share that gigabit LAN. So unlike some of the other products that are doing um, 10 100, we're sharing that full gigabit uh, LAN at that point. 3D support, I don't really know anybody that's doing it or distributing it, but um, the Ultra HD product does support it if you want to distribute that throughout the system. Long distances, uh, we kind of talked about as well. So really anything that you can do with fiber um, piece to piece or fiber switch to switch, whether it be a college campus, um, an outbuilding, um, corporate environment, anything like that, uh, as long as it is a LAN, we can route um, really anything we want over it. So on the Ultra HD product as well is USB 2.0. Uh, this is for keyboard, mouse, touchscreen, smart board, uh, file transfer, any of those um, human interface USB devices. And these are 100% usable uh, as a matrix or point to point. The latency on the Ultra HD is 22 milliseconds, so you never have to worry about a, an end user moving a mouse and seeing it move a half second later or anything like that. It's, you know, it's ultra low latency on these Ultra HD products. On screen display, we have the ability to trigger um, text overlay, whether it be in the center of the screen, left of the screen, right of the screen, change the font, change the text. Um, and that can be triggered with an IP command as well. We typically see this done um, is a emergency exit is this way. Um, we're closing in 30 minutes, that kind of thing. On the output as well, you'll see an analog audio out. So we have the ability to down mix on the Ultra HD product. So multi-channel in, down mix to stereo. Uh, pretty self-explanatory there. We also have an HDMI output. So if you go in with your 4K source and then back out, you can then um, take that to something else if need be. The variable audio or the stereo audio out is variable as well. Um, so you can send IP commands to the transmitter, uh, match your source decibel level, or at that point possibly even go into a um, amplifier and ramp volume with IP commands. You'll see on the front of the transmitter as well is there's a mic in and a line in. We give the ability to um, embed the audio um, from an analog source. So if you wanted to say duck the HDMI audio and then page over the system or do a doorbell interrupt or fire alarm interrupt or inject audio as opposed to listening to what the video um, is playing, you can do all that kind of stuff and mix that within the transmitter. Full CEC over IP. In this situation, your control system sends an IP command. Uh, we translate it to CEC and send those commands out of the HDMI cable. It seems to be pretty limited at what it can do at this point. You know, power on, power off, mute, things like that. Um, certain source input selections, but um, those databases are growing daily and we support it on all the Ultra product. You also see a 232 port on uh, each receiver and transmitter. Uh, once again, your control system will send out an IP command to a receiver or transmitter. We will then translate that into serial and send it out and control what is on the other end of it. Uh, these are full two-way ports as well. So instead of taking up a 232 connection on your control processor, these are really, I guess, virtual connections, if you want to think of them that way. Uh, you assign your receiver a transmitter um, IP address, and then just send them serial commands from there. So you don't have to worry about having those physical connections on your processor to take advantage of that. So some of the quick you know, projects we've been involved with, Caesars Palace Sportsbook is all just at power. Um, we're actually doing the Dubai Mall now, which has, you know, a few hundred pieces in it to start. 
Yard House nationwide, you know, just some 24-7 operations that, that utilize us for routing and control and, and other things. So how does it work? Uh, we have a variety of different ways we can um, actually set the network up and route video. So there's what we think of an unmanaged switch on the left. Here's what we think of a managed switch on the right. So everything's in its lane where we want it to be and we can route things appropriately. So two different ways. The first way is each transmitter gets assigned to its own VLAN. And then your receiver ports are told which VLANs to look at to grab its video. Uh, the other way is there's a single video VLAN assigned, say, on a core network of a, a corporation or hospital or school or something like that. We put up to 16 transmitters and unlimited receivers in a single VLAN, and then we switch them uh, to tell them which transmitter to look at. So there's a couple different ways, and whatever makes more sense in the project, we can set it up that way. Um, the switch comparison, these are the switches that we have drivers written for, and this is true of the 1080p product as well as the Ultra product. Uh, so SG300s straight off the shelf, SG500s, all those Luxel switches there. These are all built into our software tool, uh, so you, you don't have to necessarily have a networking background to set this up by any means. Um, the software tool, you tell it I have this many transmitters, this many receivers, what I want the static IP of the switch to be, and it writes that configuration directly to the switch without you ever having to enter into the web interface, command line interface, or anything like that. So you see where it says driver supported. So we have uh, modules and drivers written for all of those models there. And these are automatic um, drivers and modules. So we'll take um, Crestron, for example, if you drop the module we have written in for the Just Add Power, it reads how the switch is configured, whether it's a 10 by 20 or a 20 by 50, it doesn't matter. Um, the module knows. And then you just start to sign from buttons from there. So you never have to write a command, edit a command, find a command, anything like that. Um, it's purely an automatic process at that point. So now we'll talk about um, the tiling real quick. So when we first release this, um, coming this month, uh, that it's going to be in our 2G product line. So 1080p and 1080p out. Uh, if you can see on there, I know it's kind of a small picture, but it only has network connections in. So uh, you still have a transmitter per source in the Just Ed Power System. So even if you have 15 sources, you can route any of those four directly to those receiver ports at any time um, using your control. So you really have whatever sources you want to go in. Those are then processed however you choose within the tiling box. So if you can see on the bottom left, we have a single screen with three down the side. Um, in the middle, some funky tiling just to show you what can be done. And then a single on top, three across the bottom. You can do even quads. Uh, you can flip images, rotate images. And then once that's all processed, you see the transmitter port. So it goes back out into the system as a source at that point. So this isn't a single string type application, but more of a available on any just a power receiver in the system. Nice thing about that on video walls is it starts to take us out of where we have to utilize the exact space on a screen. So um, in a video wall example, we can start to have half an image on one screen, half an image on another screen, flip images, rotate images, kind of set it up however we want at that point. Um, you also see that we have an HDMI um, output on the tiling box. So if there's a local monitor that you want to see how it's tiled before you send it out, you can do that. Uh, also extract audio. We even added physical tactile buttons to this one. Um, so if you just want to you know, walk up and set presets on it, you can do that without having to fully set up a control system to take advantage of that tiling. Another neat um, 
feature of this is you can add as many of these tiling boxes as you want to. So once again, in theory, you could have 65,000 tiles on a single screen. Not that anyone would do that, but uh, we can definitely see where, you know, 16, 20, 24 um, would be added to a single screen and routed throughout the system. So like I said, you'll see that from us um, really shipping within the next couple weeks. So now some ultra features that are um, a little um, unique and, and different than what we, our 1080p product does. So in all of the uh, UHD receivers, or 3G as we're going to call them, uh, we have built scalers into. So in this example here, we have two 4K sources, we have a 1080p source, uh, we have a couple 1080p sets and we got a, a few 4K uh, displays as well. So what happens in this system um, with pretty much anybody else's matrix if they're trying to show that 4K source on a 1080p screen, uh, no signal searching for signal, un you know, format not compatible, whatever it may, may say. Now what we have the ability to do is route that 4K signal to any of the Ultra HD receivers. At that receiver, we can tell it to output 1080p 60, 1080p 50, 2160, pass through at 4K. We really have um, the ability to, to manipulate that signal however we need to fully intermix the 1080p 4K system. Uh, so that's you know pretty unique uh, ability that we have there. Uh, we also, that we talked about earlier, we have seamless instant switching uh, through all resolutions. So if you're switching from 1080 interlace to uh, 2160p, uh, that seamless instant switch immediately. So you're never going to have to see that black screen or no signal type of application. Another thing that's unique to what we're doing is this is all done over a gigabit um, network. So we're not requiring any 10 gig stitch uh, switches or 10 gig stacks or fiber or anything like that. Um, currently we're using probably 35 percent of what the processors in these transmitters and receivers can do so um, we have the ability to to really begin to do whatever we want over a gigabit network. We also added um, the ability to do all the uncompressed audio formats through even Dolby Atmos. So you can send these directly over the HDMI um, and and receive them on the other end. So if you are going to do you know Atmos theaters or if you want to distribute DTS master audio, uh, really any of those will travel and be sent um, over this network as well. What in the past in our 1080p product, we could only do the the compressed formats. So same mic in, line in, uh, stereo audio out and 232 USB, you can see all those connections directly on the box there. Jeff? Yep. We have a couple of questions. Um, how, is okay. the, uh, how is the video compressed? Is it JPEG 2000? No, we we've, um, have a proprietary codec that we've developed over our eight years of doing HDMI over IP. Um, which gives us the ability to make changes and, and things on the fly. Uh, it gives us the unique ability to, you know, right now the highest content in UHD that we're seeing out there is um, 2160p at 30 frames per second. So we have the ability to, you know, right now tailor that codec directly towards that resolution. Where in the future when we start to see or if we see these resolutions come out at 60 frames per second, we can then, you know, tailor um, the codecs and things like that for that particular resolution as well. Um, so we're not relying on any other group to, you know, assist or help with changes on the fly. Um, it's all in-house. Uh, another benefit that gives us is we are 100% HDC, compliant end-to-end uh, -end with uh, HDCP. So we support all the one-point formats, and we now support 2.2 and in, in these Ultra HD products. 
Um, is there any color subsampling like uh, 4 to 0 to 0? Yes, right now we support um, 4111 and 420. Uh, we are going to add support for 444 content um, with a firmware update in the future uh, when those sources become available. Right now the 444 seems to kind of be like deep color with 1080p. It's nice on paper, but we really don't see much of it. Um, so as soon as we start to see those sources and there's a need for it, um, we're going to add that in with a firmware update. Um, are there any special Ethernet cables required, or can I just use my existing cables? Uh, we recommend Cat5e and above. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be shielded. So typically that's really about 90% of the installs that we see at this point. Uh, so you should be good with what's already there. Uh, we don't really, like I said, need to use shielded cable uh, because this information is packetized. Uh, we're not worried about um, interference or anything like that through the cables. Yeah. Okay. I think that wrapped up the questions we have right now. So thanks. Ben. Okay. <clears throat> Another um, unique thing that we added to the 3G product line is the ability to custom overlay a logo. So in this case, you can see real quick that we just popped on a, an Ultra HD logo right in the center of the screen. But we could do that upper left, upper right, um, really trigger that um, whenever we want and wherever we want. Um, we do a lot of Buffalo Wild Wings um, installs, and they want to put their little buffalo with wings up in every you know right-hand corner to keep their message the same throughout the the restaurant. So, you know, just another kind of little thing that we added on these new products. In the 3G receivers, uh, this is also unique to the 3G product line, is the ability to image rotate and flip. Uh, so you don't necessarily need a panel that's going to do landscape or portrait, I'm sorry. Uh, we can start to flip and manipulate that image directly in the receiver itself. Um, just another thing to keep in mind if you want to do, you know, video walls and portrait, or if you want to do digital signage and portrait, uh, we can then use um, less expensive displays and do that prior to uh, it actually getting to the end destination. So right now, that is everything we do over a single Cat 5e or Cat 6 cable, and this list seems to be growing all the time. Um, I won't read them to you because. We have went over all of them, I believe, uh, but, you know, like I said, everything that we currently do, uh, here's a quick roadmap of what you will see from us in the near future. So the tiling device we talked about, you'll see in the next couple weeks, um, the Ultra HD product or 3G product line, you'll see from us the end of September, first week in October. Uh, we have developed a serial to IR piece as well, so for some of these legacy um, sources and things that, that won't accept IP or 232 or CEC. This piece, for lack of a better term, is a dongle that plugs into the serial port of a transmitter receiver and then gives you the ability to flash um, an IR uh, emitter at that point and control whatever's on the other end of that. From there, some pieces that are a little further out from us, probably 2016, we're going to move into audio-only transmitters and receivers, so digital inputs and outputs, um, analog inputs and outputs, just no video on them. So the ability to do a fully modular audio matrix, too. And then we will move the, four, uh, the tiling box into the 4K realm as well, so um, 4K inputs and outputs. So that's you know really kind of what we have going on. Um, what's new, and you know, from there it would be, you know, if there's any more questions, I'd be happy to answer them. It might be nice if I unmute myself before I start asking you questions. Huh? <laughs> it's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> what is the latency on the transmitter receiver end to end? Uh, on the 3G, which is the Ultra HD, it is 22 milliseconds from encode to decode. OK. 
Okay, great. Um, the next one. Will the transmitters accept 1080 interlaced or 720p? And will the receiver scale down to 720p? Uh, they will definitely accept it on the transmitter side. We don't currently have the scaler set to go down to 720p. Uh, I think the lowest resolution on the scaler output we have is um, 1080p, 30 frames per second. Um, I can double check if we can do 720p, but at this point, um, I did not see that as an option. Here's an interesting question. Um, do you have a demo version of the system config control uh, software? The control software? Yeah, or the system configuration software. Is there any kind of uh, demo version, anything that uh, somebody can Yeah, try? absolutely. So the configuration software is totally free, and it is on justadpower.com. Uh, so that's just a free download, as well as there's a walkthrough video to kind of show you uh, what's going on start to finish. Uh, the control software, there's really two ways to, or a few ways to control from there. So you either go to a control system that you typically work with, or there's PC, Mac, or Linux-based software uh, that we make available as well. Uh, those, are, those come with a 30-day um, trial version. Uh, typically what we see is, is most integrators like to use their control system that they're most familiar with. So whether it be, you know, AMX, Crestron, RTI, Control 4, whatever it is, um, they like to stay in that realm. But we do make it available on a, on a software platform as well, um, you know, PC, Mac, or Linux. Great. Um, <clears throat> can you use the, uh, the boxes for audio only? Uh, yes, you can. So you could, you know, inject audio or just send um, audio over them and pull them out on, on the receiver side if you would like. Okay. And what does the manager look like? Is it software only? Does it, uh, do you, uh, does it work on both a PC and a Mac? Uh, we don't have um, really a manager. Uh, what ends up happening is a the, the software tool, whether it be that PC, Mac, or Linux-based program, or your control system directly interfaces with um, our devices. So we don't have a central, you know, control processor that some of the other manufacturers have. So you never need to address that box individually, type of thing. Um. Somebody's asking a great question about uh, design assistance. And uh, BTX and Just Add Power work very closely together to help you design any size system and answer any questions that you might have. Our outside sales team um, is readily available and very technical. So um, you know, we're here for you. And uh, I will put up all of our contact information in one second. Um, Another question, can the USB be routed separately from the video stream? Um, let me think. Not at this time, no. Okay. So yeah, it has to be controlling whatever transmitter that you're looking at. Um, you asked, you answered the latency question, and I, what about on person asking on the 1080p transmitter receiver and end? Those are 35 milliseconds, so they're a little um, slower. Uh, so yeah, 35 milliseconds on the 1080p from encode to decode. Um, this is another great question. Uh, do you know of any customers implementing this in live event production, and what kind of examples can you give? Uh, I do know of a few of them, um, mostly uh, some presentation type things, and I can give references um, kind of on a per need basis once we're done with this if you want. Sure. 
Um, what's the approximate failure rate of the transmitter receivers? Are devices repairable, or do they just usually get replaced? Uh, failure rate is under 2%. That, that's what gives us the ability to overnight replace these things. Otherwise, we would go broke pretty quickly. Um, really, what we'd do, rather do is replace it for you. UPS label in the box, you ship the one back, we figure out why it failed. Um, if it's worthless, we'll throw it away. If not, we'll, you know, reload it with uh, proper software and things like that and then, you know, make it as a B-stock or showroom or put it into a demo kit type of thing. We wouldn't um, put it back into an A-stock type at that point. Um, so, some, so the person who asked the question about um, live events, they're saying, okay, you don't have to actually give customers, but can you give some examples of how the products are being used? Uh, I mean, a lot of presentation type things uh, where, you know, presenter on stage, laptop um, routed throughout the system. Uh, we do a lot of, uh, like, SPI cameras in um, house of worship type applications where to overflow rooms, to um, lobbies, to outbuildings and things like that. Uh, we see a lot of that done. Uh, we even have some concert type applications where live performance, we're putting their image and things up on large screens as well as screens that are out by refreshment areas and things like that. Okay. Another great question. What is the main installation mistake that causes issues? Uh, the main one that we would see is someone utilizing a switch that we've never um, brought in and vetted. It's just, you know, command line interfaces from switch A are totally different from B. So if we're trying to manually configure these, it, it turns into a lot more of a headache than ones that we've used in the past and know um, exactly the inside and outside of these things. That's really the main thing that we see um, that turns into, you know, not the greatest experience come install time. Okay. All right. Well, we've gone seven minutes over our allotted time. and. Uh, you know, everybody's had such great questions, and I appreciate it. We'll continue to ask questions. Everybody uh, can see on the screen. There's info at btx.com. Um, everybody has my email at kimr at info at btx.com. Feel free to continue to ask questions and uh, ask for support when designing a system. Uh, Just Add Power has a whole suite of products. Um, we were talking specifically about some new ones. Um, although Jeff did touch on some of the uh, the products that uh, they have in circulation. So um, we're here for you. And again, thank you very much, Jeff, for, uh, for presenting to our customers. And I hope everybody has a great rest of the week. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you.